Donnell, Lawson, McDermott and Thompson. 37 for five. Well, who would have believed that could possibly happen out there this afternoon? And the reason it happened uh, is Richard Ellison, who very nearly didn't play in this match and already has four wickets in the second innings. A terrific effort from him. Both of them took the first one, Hilditch, and then Ellison's figures, five overs, three maidens, four for two. What an astonishing performance that is. And the match situation at the close of play on the fourth day, Australia with five wickets in hand, uh, 223 runs behind. Uh, Birmingham, in fact, it did, and it delayed play until 2.30 in the afternoon. The umpires had a couple of goes at getting the players out. The ground staff, incidentally, had done an absolutely magnificent job. Well, the second time they came out, we pick up play now with uh, the second ball, no runs added, and it's Ellison coming in to bowl to Ritchie. One sharp single, finally sees uh, Greg Ritchie off the mark. The single brings the left-hander Wayne Phillips down to face. That's good firm shot. Nice uh, half volley. Long chase back there for uh, David Gow, but all in vain. Yes, that's a good shot, and that's what the Australians will want to uh, get that ball wet, get rid of the shine. But a pretty good shot there by Wayne Phillips. Got right to the pitch of that one, and good follow through, kept it down through X cover. More runs there, beautiful shot for four runs. Alison can't afford to stray down that leg side. Seal uh, the field set there with three slips, a gully, a cover, a mid-off. Can't afford anything loose on the leg side. So already two good shots from uh, Wayne Phillips. Alison again. He's had a very good match in the field as Phil Edmonds. He's taken the three exceedingly good catches, pulled off some extraordinary stops. And certainly he's a very, very brave fielder. Feels uh, so close to uh, some of the bowlers, it's almost unbelievable. Another fine shot for four more. Is that a little bit short? And beautifully timed and hit with plenty of power. And Richard Allison getting hardly any movement at all now. And I do feel that uh, probably Ingham will have to revert to spin, and certainly at one end, to see if they can cause any problems for the left-hander out of the rough there. Bounce very high, was it uh, almost on the bottom of the bat? Well, it really does look slow, that wicket out there now. It, uh, last night it seemed to go through a little bit, and now it seems slower than ever this morning. So, problems there for England, trying to get these last five wickets. Taylor to bowl again, Richie to face. Seem to be two definite clicks there to me, that and pad. Not a chance if that ball had carried to slip. Yes, I don't think there's any doubt Greg Ritchie got an inside edge on here. Little inside edge and it almost made first slip.
That's a good shot. Off the back foot. Robinson uh, giving chase. Touch and go. A uh, good stop. And the predicted change in the attack has now arrived. Phil Edmonds taking over from Richard Ellison at the city end. And uh, Edmonds, of course, can't use the rough to the right-hander unless he uh, decides to bowl over the wicket. At the moment, he's going in the more orthodox manner coming round. He's got a short leg, a slip and a silly point in. Mid-wicket, mid-on. Three men on the off, saving one. has three more. Now Edmonds can come over the wicket and uh, look for the rough outside the left-handers off stump. Yes, useful ball. That uh, caught a bit of the rough, turned a bit. And uh, first ball really to react, I've been heralded with some blue sky ahead. Yes, and pretty well played by Wayne Phillips. He kept it down. The weather certainly taken turn for the better. Patches of uh, blue sky right overhead now. One eighty five the difference. And, uh, Gower still persevering with his Leicestershire colleague here, Taylor again. With a full-blooded cover drive from uh, Wayne Phillips. And yet another boundary. And yet another example of uh, the fact that even in a situation like this, it's a very good thing to play your natural game. Wayne Phillips on 31, Greg Ritchie on 12, and 80 for 5. Well, that still doesn't look very healthy. And with the sunshine out, it was a question of how long those two could stay together. Well, three runs routed after T by the time the second over came along. We pick up play now. Ian Botham is the bowler. He's coming to bowl to the left-hand stroke player, Wayne Phillips. Turned that nicely. The outfield is reasonably quick, considering all the rain there has been. No men in defensive positions, so there have been quite a number of boundaries for Wayne Phillips. He's been prepared to play his strokes. And the score goes on now to 87 for five. Spin there. It'll be better for Richie to take Edmonds. I think that's what they're working on there. The two occasions where they could have taken three runs. But um, it makes it more difficult for the left arm spinner where he hasn't got rough stuff to bowl into. Yes, and that's certainly more than straightened. Pitched around about off the middle and would have probably just missed off them. there for Phil Edmonds for running down the track.
sort of ball that is almost unplayable for a left-hander. I reckon that pitched about uh, middle, perhaps middle and off, whizzed past the outside edge. Beautiful delivery. Yes, and certainly that doing a bit more like what happened with the seam balls getting a bit of movement off the wicket. Possibly now everything's got a bit drier, the atmosphere's drier, and uh, maybe the balls begin to grip on the wicket a little again. Well, that's four, but um, it will fit in with uh, Ian Botham's planning. So it seems to me that he has those three gullies there. He's going to give Phillips the chance to play that stroke. Yes, and uh, I, for one, wouldn't uh, be willing to bet against him both and get him caught in the gully. Trying him out again with the short one, and Wayne Phillips going for the square. And you can see that. Just about carrying to the field of there, Tim Robinson. at uh, the city end he'll probably come back for three no they've decided that uh, Richie will take as much of the spin as possible to keep Phillips away from the footmarks 100 up Australia started off at 223 behind 100 has come up in 268 balls This is the old case of dear mother. I got the one that bounced all day. First one that bounced all day, but uh, on a pitch as easy pace as this, that really took off and just whistled past uh, Wayne Phillips's shoulder and chin and uh, nearly pinned the wicketkeeper 20 yards farther back. That's an incredible delivery on this wicket. Phillips 50 played quite beautifully since the players went back on A lovely series of strokes early on of Richard Ellison he's made his 50 in only 78 balls and has hit 10 boundaries his second 50 of the series he made 91 up at uh, Headingley in the second innings Perhaps Phillips is uh, going to respond by trying to hit the ball squarer or hit it in front of point rather than uh, getting it just behind the square position. And Phil Edmonds taking over from the pavilion end after an excellent spell by Ian Botham. For oh, one or two really good deliveries. him <coughs> but will it be given out it'll need some consultation umpires would need to have been eagle-eyed I couldn't see what happened it'll need to be something on the replay umpire Shepard has given him out and Phillips is distraught and Richie at the other end is equally distraught Whether it's disappointment at the way he got out or not is difficult to tell. 
but here's the shot he crashes it down into a boot and David Gower turns around and picks it up I don't honestly think there was any question that that wasn't out well that was uh, a desperately unfortunate dismissal for Wayne Phillips who played so very well Donald taking strike Just an interesting thing about that last suspected catch was that Ian Botham had his hands on his knees again. Slightly less aggressive feel for Richie, who's coped very well out there. time well it played uh, pretty well so Greg Ritchie goes for 20 and Embury takes his first wicket of the match yes, good piece of bowling this little bit of flight Ritchie pushing forward and there's just one thing I'll say about that which is very good to see is that Greg Ritchie didn't hang around. He knew he'd hit it and he was on his way straight away, which is very sporty. So there's still uh, 143 runs behind. The weather has cleared. Blue sky, sunshine here. Closing on five o'clock now. Embry to Lawson. So just. Uh, McDermott and Thompson to come. Swung away, nobody out on the boundary. Taylor uh, giving chase there. It's uh, just too quick for him, I So Lawson collects three. So on five o'clock, the 20 over, mandatory 20 overs has been signalled by the umpires. <laughs> and he's gone. <laughs> there we go, he's having a ball out there. Edmonds take the wicket, Lawson goes, it's 120 for eight. And England nearly home. This is, of course, an absolutely vital match for England to win, put them on ahead in the series and uh, Australia then would have to win at the Oval. And just a little bit of turn and stop and pushed into David Gow who's very very close there and he did extremely well to clutch that in there. Well it might be a, a sort of foreign situation for uh, Craig McDermott here couple of uh, spinners and good spinners too and finding himself in a position now where he's going to play through about 19 overs back to the wall stuff the maiden in fact the wicket maiden Edmund's uh, turning in five fine figures here now 14 overs two for 12 Nine of those overs have been scores. A little consultation means that Edmonds comes off after his two wickets and both of them comes back. With a Donald down there, uh, this could be slightly more interesting. Might have been in David Gow's thoughts that uh, both of them has got rid of a Donald three times in the series. Both of them's done it again. 
Ball of full length, and O'Donnell hitting all around it. He goes for 11. 137 for nine. Also establishes a record for both them, yet another one. It's most wickets taken by an Englishman against Australia, 129. Yes, Ian Burke again, a little bit of in-swing there, and just finding the gap between Butt and Fab. Well, no doubt he deserved that wicket. He's bowled uh, pretty well here today, that's his second wicket in the innings. And uh, as things turned out, it's a very good uh, move by Gower to bring uh, both of them back at O'Donnell. So the last two Australian batsmen at the wicket, one thirty-seven for nine. Both of them in. And his goat. Caught at short leg by Edmonds. Botham's done it again. 142 all out. And England winning a test match. A thoroughly deserved victory. A game in which they've outplayed Australia with bat, with ball and in the field. Edmonds uh, has picked up, I think, about four catches in this test match. They've all been pretty good ones. And this, the one that mattered most of all. Edmonds, a very good, a very safe pair of hands. So, victory by an innings and 118 runs for England to go 2-1 up in the series with just the final test to come at the Oval. Yes, what a match that will be because the positions are reversed now. The Australians, although they hold the Ashes, now have to win at the Oval, whereas before, before this game at Edgbaston, they could have been content with the draw. 142 all out, with Phillips playing a very good innings for 59. His partnership with Ritchie was excellent. Those two young players played very well, but it was unlikely the rest of the batsmen were going to be able to withstand uh, England towards the close. 142 and some really good bowling figures there. Richard Ellison, four for 27 from nine overs, three maidens. He didn't add to his tally today. 3 for 52 to both of them who bowled with plenty of pace and even on this placid pitch managed to get plenty of movement and a little bit of lift as well. And the spinners did a superb job at the end with plenty of pressure on the batsman. 15 overs for Edmonds and 2 for 13 and Embry 13 overs and 1 for 19. So the result of this uh, fifth Cornhill Test match at Edgbaston, which ground incidentally continually produces results even though in county games, it has the reputation of being a very flat pitch. England beat Australia by an innings and 118 runs. So a terrific performance from the England side. And one for 19. So a terrific performance from the England side. I think it's fair to say that uh, had they not won because of the weather, justice would not have been done. By the same token, you take your luck as it comes, and if the Australians had got out of it, then uh, they could justifiably have been pleased. The two skippers, well, there'll be of contrasting opinions, I would think. Here they are now talking with Peter West. David, what about that? Well played. Well, I'm almost very delighted. It's been uh, a very, very frustrating day. Um, we sat around this morning not knowing what was going to happen, not knowing if the weather would ever clear. And then when we did get on the field, we came off after two balls. When we got back on again, it looked as though things weren't quite going our way. Yes, there was a time, wasn't there, when it really looked as if it was going to be another one that will get away from you? Well, yes, I mean, nothing seemed to go to hand. Nothing, anything that did go to hand went down. Uh, Phillips and Richie played well again, looked very solid. Nothing much seemed to be happening. And you're always just looking for that break that changes things around. Alan, what's your story? Well, obviously very, very disappointed. Uh, you know, we didn't really deserve to get out of the game, but uh, with the rain this morning, I thought we had, uh, you know, a better even and chance. Uh, by the time we started, we only had to bat for you know, a session and a half, so, uh, you know, I thought we could have saved it then, but that's the way it goes. So, the two skippers, Alan Border, who was so delighted after the Old Trafford test, wasn't quite so happy today. David Gower, who uh, wasn't quite so happy at Old Trafford, had every cause today to be very, very pleased. A double century for him, good tactics and jubilation at the end. By an innings and 118 runs. So, a terrific performance from the England side. 